Okay, my outstanding friends. As you know, I have discovered mud fossils. I had them all tested, DNA, CAT scans, figured out all the, the chemical properties that create feldspar, which is aluminum silicates. I understand the whole process now, and it is totally different than the dinosaur bones. They're do totally different. They were sequestered in little places where they were just kept out of the, the, the conditions that would make them decompose. Our stuff, the mud fossils, is completely saturated for long periods of time and completely invaded by new molecules. It's, it's called nucleophilic substitution and invasion. I'm going to go over this, but there's two completely, totally different things. And um, this they're talking about finding these, they call them ancient brains and how they're still pliable and everything. Well, I'm going to explain to you why they're still pliable and why they would be turning to dust in a couple of days if they dried them out, because we have done it. Okay, this is really quite simple. They're saying this is an unprecedented discovery. Oh, it's a huge discovery. Archive of ancient human brains challenges history. Well, I have some challenges for history myself. Now, they're finding these brains in wet soils. Very wet. Listen to this. Thousand-year-old brain individual excavated from a 10th century churchyard. The folds of the tissue, which are still soft and wet, are stained orange with iron oxide. The reason it's still in this condition is it's wet. You take this out and dry it out, and it's going to turn into dust. We did it with with lungs. Same thing. Once you have a lot of this iron oxide, that's nothing more than blood. Brains are just saturated with blood. Lungs and hearts are as well. I gotta be honest with you, I have no idea why they're doing this, but <laughs> they're collecting brains from all around the world. It's <laughs> The team compiled a new archive of preserved human brains which highlighted the nervous tissues actually persist in much greater abundance than traditionally thought. Everything persists in much greater abundance than they thought. It's assisted by conditions that prevent decay. That's the blood, and their bodies must have been running down to some degree where the blood ran into the brain and preserved it. The blood is what preserves it, the iron. Now, it says the Global Archive drawing on source materials in more than 10 languages represents the largest, most complete study of the archaeological limit literature to date, exceeds 20-fold the number of brains previously compiled. I don't know what they're going to do with all these brains, but you're never going to see these out of water. As soon as they come out of the water or fluids, whatever they got them soaked in, psh, they're done. They just they turn into dust and I'll show it to you. Look at 4,000 preserved human brains. You see this? They're talking about all different, way back to 12,000 years ago and they were cataloged in the mid-17th century. I don't think they really know what they were doing, or st still they don't know what they're doing, so I don't think they knew what they were doing then either. It says the, the scouring, canvassing historians worldwide, a concerted effort revealed a bewildering array of archaeological sites yielding ancient human brains from the Incan Empire, Andy, Andes, all that stuff. Now, this is the key, heavily waterlogged graves. When it's preserved in water, they last virtually forever, especially when they have iron in them. Wait, I show you some lungs. Hold on. All right, this is a, a mudstone. A friend of mine found Gary Evans over in England in, in a mud flat area that was probably never was dried out forever. All right, now here's what he found when he opened that piece up. Inside was this stuff. All right, so this, it was just a rock-looking thing, and he broke it open, and inside was the lung, because it is a lung. Now, this is when he put a little water on it, you see? This black part is the used blood. The red part is the, the new blood that's going to be pumped to um, oxygenate the body. It's still got the blood. It's, these are floppy. They, they were still floppy-like. However... As soon as a couple of days went by, a week or two, I can't remember what it was. This goes back a long time. It turned. This is what happened to it. This is what happened in the end. It just turned to dust. Because once it loses that wetness, it just dusts off and falls apart.
And that's the same thing that's going to happen to those brains. They take them out of the water or whatever they have them in, the liquid. Now here's another lung. I believe it's a lung. It's all deteriorated. And all of these little tubes were running into alveoli. And that's where the air came in and surfaced all these little round tubes, little round alveoli holes in there to oxygenate the blood. Now they're talking about brains. This is a brain. And this is the guy's throat coming down this way. That's his tongue that would have come out this way. And it had all these, this membrane in there, your nasal cavity membranes. And then he washed it all out and cleaned it up. But remember what it looks like here. That's, that's the trachea. Your throat comes right down in here. And that's where the tongue is, see? And that is the nasal cavity. Now, after he washed it up, here's what happened. And I don't know why he did that, to be perfectly honest with you, but that's what happened. Here it is right here. Now, this is, looks like glass because it's just it's nothing but silicates, basically, now. All right, that, that right up there, it has his nasal cavities. Before, it was they were plugged up with a membrane. And there's the little tongue. I guess he ripped that off, too. But it's good I got both shots before and after. Now, the silicates, I have a heart here. This heart, that's a heart. And it's the same sort of stuff. They turn into silicates. I had another one here I cut in half. Somewhere around here it is. And inside, they have all of those, the, the heart strings and all that stuff. But it was a heart. It was an, another heart just like this. I cut it open to see what was in it. And this is why everything, silicates filled in all the cavities. So this, it's called nucleophilic substitution and invasion. There was so much silicates in the water that they just came in and took over and replaced the other materials that were there as the waters continued to, to move through all of the tissues because they, they, they moved through the membranes. The membranes stayed. But what was in the membranes got replaced. Right, it's nucleophilic substitution. Now, here's a brain that was a lot bigger. <laughs> it's a brain, though. And that's a, a woman looking at it saying, wow, that's a pretty good-sized brain. Yes, ma'am, you are right. Here's another shot of the same brain. You can just see the eyeball. Right, and that's the back of the, you know, where your back of your skull opens up. And uh, that's a brain. There was giants in the earth in those days. And after that, there was more giants. Now, I see here's what the brain looks like and the eyeballs. I think it either broke right there and you can see where the eyeball would have been. Or it could even be the eyeball. But I think the eyeball would be much too big. You see, I think that's just a stalk coming out, and the eyeball would have set out here some quite a bit bigger than that. But um, that's a brain. Now, I showed you the lung, and this lung here, and the brain, and the nasal cavity, and all that. Now, let's take a look at some gigantic brains, and here's another one right here. This one here is a brain, and that's all that green stuff is moss. It grows on blood. There's a lot of blood in brains. And anytime you see a lot of moss, it means that there's blood in there. Some of there's blood in there that this moss is living off of. I've shown this a million times. Hunstanton Beach in, in the United Kingdom. This is fascia, and that's the skin on the top. And that's the fascia. And these little black spots are balls, and they're tough as hell. And here it is when it eroded out. Here it is right here. There's the skin. I know, I know, I know, I know. It's, it's just ridiculously large, but that's what it is. This is the flesh underneath, and the balls have eroded out and laid here. Now, this is turned into mud. It's nothing more than mud, which is the eroded flesh. That's what mud is, is eroded flesh. Now, these balls are pretty good size. And you see what this coating them? This is what they, they call these stromatolites. Oh, yeah, they, they just grow right there. No, they're not growing there. There's things growing on them. Those were balls, and they're in these walls. And once they get in here, they get colonized by whatever can live off of the blood coming out of them. Now, these are the Moki marbles. 
You see all those little black, they call them concretions. Oh, they just happens. No, it doesn't. Those are from body tissue like this. All right, and like this. And they erode just like this. All right, now these don't have any moss growing on them because they're out in the desert and they're not in the conditions. But there is going to be, going to be, um, edible stuff in these balls. Let me show you another place where those balls turned into moss. Remember I told you moss loves great red blood? Well, let me show you. All right, the ones at the ocean, they get to turn brown, some kind of, I don't know what it is, some kind of algae attacks it. The ones in the fresh water that, that survive, they turn brilliant green. Look at that. Look at these, those are all those same things as the Moki marbles. Look at them. They're all over here, everywhere. These creatures were just absolutely stunningly large. And these are the balls that are the exact same balls, only there's moss living on the blood. They love this. They love blood. Moss just absolutely thrives on blood. You see it? Same stuff going on here. It, it, it just it just attach there and live on the, on that rock. If there was just a rock and had no no vitality to it, well, but when you get blood, they sell blood meal. I buy it for plants. Blood meal makes things grow vibrantly green. All right, so we've seen the Moki marbles. We've seen the green mossy little balls, the same Moki marble balls, only they're green this time. We've seen the brains, we've seen the lungs, see how they deteriorate. Let's take a look at um, Devil's Tower. But first of all, look at this. This is a brain, too. Inside of it's opal. Opal is, is a blood. You know, blood creates opals. It's the transition metals that create all these colors. Very, very stunning looking stuff, but it's, it's transition metals that invade and replace the bloody tissues that were inside of there. Opals um, thrive, and they only can be created when they're long, long, long duration. Biological stuff is saturated with blood. And then the, the transition metals find partners to partner up with to make them stable, and then it turns into the opal. See this, this is moss where there's red blood and this is lichen where the black blood is. These are tendons, these big, big things, they're tendons. And there's black and there's red. And black blood and red blood. All right, this is Devil's Tower. This is an Achilles heel. And it came up to meet the leg up above here. This stuff here, you see it peeling off here? That is what they call slurpy, small leucine-rich proteins. And they cover each one of these fibers so that they can slide amongst themselves through this slurp. This is from the tendon, from the um, lichen or moss, whatever it is, attaching to this particular type of chemistry. It's the green stuff. Sometimes it's yellow, sometimes it's green, sometimes it's orange and they attach to, depends upon what the, the chemistry is. Now you see down here all these little green spots? Those are little tiny blood vessels where they're growing where the green was. Now they don't pay attention to, to what surrounds these things. That, is not, that was biology. And the creature that died there, died as far as I'm concerned, probably in the great flood, standing up, finally either drowned, boiled to death, or or starved and then all of his body came down around this so what should we see we should see a lot of red blood and green growth oh guess what that's what we see a lot of green growth and we see a lot of red blood now somebody mentioned to me and i think they might be right this really could have been the guy's penis if that's his ankle this thing right here is is saturated with blood and you know <laughs> that's that's what they're saturated with, and it's got got that look, and it's all of this green is all the body. You see, this is red from the body tissue, the body parts. All of this green, 
And I mean, all of this red is, is the flesh where it laid down here. And all of the green is growing in the flesh. That's what's going on there. You see that? This is not just accidentally happened in here in these layers. These are layers of some kind of flesh or ri ribs or something going on there. But all of this red is from the body tissue. That's from the body tissue eroding. Now let's look at the wrinkle zone. That's the key. You see this? This, this is the wrinkle zone. You see how scruffy looking it is? And then down here it turns into nice sort of straight flat pieces. What a wrinkle zone is, is a tendon is under tension. It's like a rubber band, and it's always pulled tension. There's always a lot of tension. Always. When you snap it, bing, it snaps back, and you get a wrinkle zone. Sulfur secret role in organic of origin of life. Scientists unveil prebiotic secrets. Okay, now. What do we have here? We have a wrinkle zone, and then we have the rest of the Achilles heel. And you, you see these wrinkles, so sometimes they're very, very cool looking. This one, the guy was standing straight up and it snapped. Sometimes they might have been laying over sideways and it's just sort of unwrinkled. I think I might have shots of something like that. Well, here's some right here. Right there. These are wrinkle zones. All right. And that was like in some kind of a shoulder or some kind of a joint where they come together and they meet up in the shoulder. And it stretches out and goes out to the muscle, something like that. And when it's snapped, boing, they all go back like that. All right, check this out. Statue of Unity in India, 182 meters tall. Look at the size of that thing. Well, look at it compared to Devil's Tower. 1,267 feet, 386 meters. That's twice as tall as the Statue of Unity, which is pretty big. But this is just a guy's ankle. And again, there's the wrinkle zone. Okay, my friends, I'm going to leave it at that. Their unprecedented discovery of a human brain's Chain challenges history. Well, I got a lot more challenging history than that. I challenge geology. I challenge history, archaeology, anthropology. I challenge the timelines of everything we've been taught. I challenge human evolution. We need to talk about God and creation because all of these things, these giants were here, and that's exactly what they talked about. They talked about giants and gods and dragons, and they're all here. So I challenge all those things. I challenge that the ancient myths were actually mythical. A lot of them were factual, had a lot of facts. I challenge the speed of light. It's, it can go faster, it can go slower. That's all nonsense. I challenge the subatomic model, the standard model. That's wrong. Dipole flood theory is correct. And it says that everything is made of dipoles, and 1,823 of them make one proton. All right, I challenge virtually everything that's being taught. And this is just another one of these things. Oh, boy, we're really, really learning something now. I'm sure they'll get a whole bunch of funding and then just walk around in circles for another 100 years. So anyway, that's... that's how I feel about everything now. It's, it's, it's become very, very distressing that there is no interest in reality. It's just not, reality is just of no interest anymore. It's all about creating a little buzz to get some funding. And even like this true social thing with Donald Trump, is if that's just going to be a, a political platform, and, and I have seen nothing but that. I try to say, if you're, going, if you're out for truth, here, let's talk about this truth. Radio silence. Well, that's what's happened. Nobody wants to talk about anything like this because I don't know exactly why. I know that the people that are in the business will get in trouble from their peers and their, their superiors. They'll be looked down on for even contemplating this. But Trump, he's talking about truth. Let's have some truth, Mr. Trump. Let's do something here. All right? I know you made a lot of money, so let's make some truth. How about that? I love you all. Bye.